can do that, but I've got skills. I've got art skills, man. You know, I wanna, I wanna. I want to do it on the street, you know, I want to do a dub, I want to do some big letters and some You colours. get paid to do what you do, and um, you probably got permission to do what you do, mm. and that's what the word street art sort of covers, but it ain't like that, um, you know, it's not like that for some so some of us artists, you know, we're, we're more like rogue artists. Hieronymus Bosch is an old uh, classic Dutch painter, mm. around the 16th century. Wow. So he painted images of demons and hell-like things, mm. you know, images of, you know, horrible stuff, uh, people getting tortured. So, you know, how you can imagine hell, he would draw that. So, so the, de the demon isn't uh, seen in a negative way, it's seen in a positive way. Yeah, that, that's, well, that's why I'm trying to ch ch sort of change that, you know what I mean? Um, so I, 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 I like to write messages, you know, have a good day, um, stay positive, uh, be inspired, or wow. are you inspired? No, you know what, I don't really want to take this to the street like that, you know, I want, to, I want people to look at my artwork and feel like, feel happy or yeah. feel, feel some kind of, you know, positive emotion. That's all from pen work and um, I, I, I wanted to, um, I, I used to look at um, old medieval paintings where they had cross hatch. Mate, it would be incredible. But That'd I haven't had the opportunity yet, so I'm waiting for opportunity where I could get a big, big wall. Afterlives. Um, Afterlives is an art movement where you give uh, 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 walls an artistic reincarnation. So um, any wall that looks rough needs a bit of love. Wow. Give it a reincarnation. Obviously, over the period of time, people are going to write on it. People are going to, posters going to get on it. It's not just graf uh, graffiti battle, or graf graffiti artists I have to battle with. It's the fly poster guys. They're, they're more ruthless. <laughs> right, now you're going to take us into yeah. the gallery now, aren't it? And we're going to have a little chat yeah. inside the gallery. Right. Yeah, let me show you something, guys. Yeah. Oh, wow. On this week's show, we have someone who lives and breathes the fine arts, and London has become his art gallery whose pieces really brighten up the city skyline with his unique style. I'm excited to say we have the hugely talented Nathan Bowen in the back of the cab. How you doing my guy, you doing yes, all right? Yes, Nath. It's an honor, my man. No, oh, thanks for having me, man. It's good to be here, man. Uh, it's been a while since I've been in a black cab. Um, yeah, I know, you're telling me your uncle's a, a driver as well. He drives a black cab as well. Yeah, big shout, Uncle Martin. Um, yeah, mate, ever since we were kids growing up, uh, yeah, he used to pick us up from school uh, in, in, in the black cab. So, like, yeah, man. Um, yeah, no, that's, it's, that's, that's wicked. It's nostalgic. And um, all, I can, all I've got to say as well is Happy New Year to everyone as well. This is the first yeah. podcast of many to be uh, dropping this year. So keep an eye on this channel because I've got some big interviews lined up. But uh, Nate, I can't wait to chat to you. And at the end of this interview, we're going to go to your gallery as well, which is in uh, Hoban, and have a little quick walk around your gallery as well, which will be amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a nice little pop-up shop there. Got a few pieces. Um, it's um, it's uh, it's a collaboration with uh, another company called Perks, and mm. um, the woman that owns uh, Perks Company. Um, yeah, she's a fan of my artwork. Um, so yeah, she uh, she's got the space. Uh, and the room to have my artwork up on the walls. Yeah. So that's how that came about. I've been in there, it's, it's, it's incredible. So yeah, anyone watching this, check the, also check the end of it. Make sure you watch it to the end because we're going to be walking around the gallery and checking it out. But Nave, I can't wait to chat to you. We're going to take this back, back to the route, back to where it all kind of started. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so first two questions I always ask is like, you know, where are you from and what was it like growing up, you know, as a kid? Yeah, so um, yeah, I'm, I was born in Greenwich. I know, um, we was chatting about this because I yeah. was as well in Greenwich Hospital. Yeah. That's mad, isn't it? So we're, we're, we're the last of the dying breed. Yeah, because that hospital shut shut down now. Yeah, that's it, man. So, yeah, no one's been born there. So, like, we're, we're, like the, we're like the special few, mate. The special <laughs> few. The special few. Definitely. And what, what era was you growing up in? All right, yeah, man. So, um, I'm 37. Um, so, yeah, I um, was born in 1986. Um, so, so like, kind yeah. of ni 90s. Yeah, so like my time was like early two thousands. To be to be honest, you know what I mean. Like you know, obviously I was around in the nineties, but mm. um, still a bit fresh. Um, a bit too young. Yeah, still a bit fresh, man. Like you know, <laughs> started started school like nineteen ninety eight, and that's when yeah, it's sort of like uh, nineteen ninety eight when I was more like going out with my mum. Mm. We'll go to like London. And yeah, classic story. You see the artwork on the walls, isn't it? You see all the you see all the graffiti on the train tracks. 
Well, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get into that in a bit. Um, but okay. yeah, yeah, growing up, man. Um, well, growing up, was you was you into art at school? Always, yeah, yeah, always, always doing drawings, um, always doing like my own comic books, making my own characters, uh, sort of like you know, exercising my imagination. Um, mm. So yeah, I've always been into art, but I didn't like when I was younger. I didn't didn't know you could do it for a living. Just thought, oh yeah, I do art. Maybe because you loved it and enjoyed it. Yeah, exactly. You so didn't like, know you could like literally, you could potentially make money from this. No, I yeah, didn't know that at all. Um, so it was kind of like a, a hobby that you loved. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And it's natural as well. Uh, like I think art for me is like a natural, it's a natural talent. You know what I mean? Like it's always been there. Um, obviously, over the years, you get better and better. But like, yeah, when I was young. The, the, I think the the art just came to me. It was just yeah, it was just sort of coded in me. It was a like boom, and it was like that's it. I'm I'm into this. Yeah. Was, was there certain kind of like comics or books that you you know you love to uh, like look through or look at this illustration? Yeah. Like record, record covers as well. Um, yeah, I mean I, I was a big fan of Sonic. I used to draw Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's mainly more like games. Um, and um, I started off with like drawing games like Sonic, uh, Mario. Uh, Yoshi. Then mm. I got into like this, the comic book, but the American. No, sorry. Before that, I was into Beano, Beano and Dandy Bino and as Dandy, well. Yeah. 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 So in my mum's loft, they've got like we've got like I don't know loads. Like I wouldn't say hundreds, but quite a lot of Beanos. I, I collected the Beanos, and my brother he collected the Dan, uh, Dan Dandies. Beanos and Dandies were le legendary. Do you remember the hardback as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Christmas specials, wasn't it? The, all the anniversaries. The and anniversary that, specials. Yeah, I, I had a couple of hardbacks. Um, but yeah, the Beanos, and after the Beanos, it was, um, like I mentioned before, it was the, the American comics. So the Joey, you go to America, and you got their comics are like small, ain't they? Yeah. Like they're not yeah. A4, they're more like, they're like in between A4 and like A, A, uh, A5. That's right. And um, I, got, I got into them. Um, I used to collect uh, the band Kiss. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah, Kiss yeah. made their own comic. And uh, like Gene Simmons and all that. Uh, and I, yeah, I used to collect those. And yeah, that inspired me to do like, you know, more like um, graphic novel type art, more like concept art. Mm. Uh, so uh, art that, you know, art with um, a, lot, a lot of fine detail. Art that you'll see in, yeah, like comic books, superheroes. Mm. Um, characters with big muscles and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. That. Like really kind of like exaggerated characters. Yeah, yeah. And what, um, also, did you, uh, was you getting into graph as well? I mean, I know you you was big into the illustration and all that, but did you have a little dab, double, um, maybe tagging or anything like that? Yeah, 2003. Um, so like, you know, um, I was, um, I was always like, I was, I was sort of like, you know, doing a bit of skateboarding. Mm. And as I mentioned before, like, you know, going out with my mum, uh, seeing all the graffiti on the train tracks, um, I'll come home, start you know, drawing stuff myself. Mm. Then when I was older, to go out on my own, like being 16, um, that's when I started doing, yeah, the tags and, you know, the dubs and stuff. Because with, with tagging, there's also an art form to tagging. It's not, you know, all right, you can put your name up, but if you look at certain tags, they've got a lot of style to them. There's a lot of style within the tag, within the hand style. Yeah. Was there certain hand styles out there that you was loving to look at? Because when I drive around town, I'm always looking at like, I'm always looking out for a good hand style. Yeah, yeah. Was there certain tags back then you can remember? Um, yeah, there was. Um, it's around my area when I was growing up, it was Catford, didn't it? Um, so th th we had a guy called Porky. Um, I don't know if he's still around, but there was a guy called Porky. What a name. Um, yeah, he used to write Porky. Sometimes it was Porky, like, you know, P-O-R-K-I-E. And mm. sometimes it was with the Y as well. Um, but I like his hand style. And there was another guy called Poise. Um, I met him a few years ago, actually. I was painting and um, he just approached me and he, he said he liked my work. And he said he used to write. And I said, oh, what did you used to write? And he says, oh, Poise. So mm. I was like, oh, yeah, and, yeah, I used to like Poise. His, his hand style was good. Um, the way he used the can, um, the way he did the P, the letters, uh, he, he just sort of like, you know, it I really enjoyed he, he inspired me. Um, so yeah, I did, I did a few tags myself. Well, you know, back, back then, obviously, you're not from my generation, because my generation is like uh, early 80s and late 80s. And the buses, 
especially around South East London, got obliterated, they got bombed so bad that you couldn't actually see out the windows. Was that still going on in your era? Were the buses getting tagged up or had yeah. the cameras come in and kind of stopped all that? No, nah, still going on, that was. Yeah. Still going on? Yeah, so I, I, I remember going to school um, and uh, yeah, this was like 999, mm. 2000. And um, yeah, man, dudes from our school were always painting on the buses. Um, my mates were doing it as well, but I I didn't bother do the buses because I knew I was better than that. I see them guys doing it, and I'll be like, yeah, I could do that. But then I'll be like, yeah, I can do that. But I've got skills. I've got art skills, man. You know, I wanna I wanna I wanna do it on the street. You know, I wanna do a dub. I wanna do some big letters with some colours. So yeah, I used to see them doing do stuff on the on the bus. And um, yeah, I, I never really you, looked down you, at them. You wanted to take it to the walls. Yeah, man. I was just like, I'm better than this. You know, I could, I could, I'm, I'm better. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna give myself a bit of self-respect and not paint the buses. But I, I was tempted, though. Yeah, I used to think, oh man, oh man, doing a quick little drawing on that. But I, I just didn't bother. Yeah, I just knew that there was better. There's a better destiny for my skills. You know you, what I mean? That one in the bus. You wanted to take it to the walls. Yeah. I mean, in terms of art on walls, you could call it, I suppose some people call it street art. You know, was there any kind of street artists back then that were kind of inspiring you as well? You know, like, um, you know, certain artists. That time, like 2000, yeah, 2000, 2002, 2000, yeah, 2003. At that time, it was more um, just a graffiti. Mm. I didn't, you know, the word, the word street art never really came into it. It was, you know, the word street art now. Mm. It's it's a label, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, to to me, it's art on walls. Exactly. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I try and I change that, like that, that, that. Yeah, man, street art, isn't it? Because um, it just gets into people's heads that oh yeah, you're them street art guys, and what that what that entails is oh yeah, you get permission for what you you do what you do, you get paid to do what you do and um you probably got permission to do what you do mm. and that's what the word street art sort of covers but it ain't like that um you know it's not like that for some so some of us artists you know we're, we're more like rogue artists um so, so it's like, still it's still got that undertone of underground and this about it yeah man like yeah. you know I, I but i like you said art on the walls um so yeah I, I do more artwork on the streets and i use the streets as a gallery and what i do is um i use I, I make it my own advert. Every day you see adverts, I make my own advert and I encourage others to do so. So if you're someone out there that wants to do, you know, the, the art on the walls, mm. street art, urban art, mm. whatever you want to do, yeah. what I'm trying to say is like, make your own advert, see it as an advert. Mm. Whether you decide to make paste ups or make your own posters, whether you spray paint and write your name, it's all advertising. Mm. So as soon as you, uh, you know, get your, get that into your mind, then um, yeah, the streets is an open gallery, you know. Well, the streets are the street is your playground. Yeah, exactly. Um, I was before we uh, you jumped in the cab. I was saying to you, you know, I know and like you know as well, like a lot of ex kind of graffiti artists that were doing graph graffiti style on walls. They they've turned into doing like becoming. I don't really like to use this term again, but becoming like street artists. Mm, mm. So. Yeah. There is kind of like a development, you know, from going from doing graph to what you might have been doing for years to suddenly uh, creating your kind of own style of art, which must be difficult as well with all the billions of people around the world to come up with your own style. Can you tell me about how you created, your, you know, your own style of art? Yeah, so... Um, when did that start? Yeah, so um, I, I, I created my own style of art. Um, it was it was going through so many different other styles so it was like you know from the early days of drawing what's in front of me still mm. life you know uh might draw like a banana or an apple that's in front of me yeah learning, learning. You, went, you went back you went back to the roots yeah i mean i from when I, from when I was drawing as a kid it was all natural so i'll i'll be learning i'll be drawing basic things drawing what's what's in front of me and then after after a period of time um you experiment you experiment with different styles um, I was looking at other artists. Uh, I was looking at one of my top uh, in inspirations is uh, a guy called Hieronymus Bosch. Hieronymus mm. Bosch is an old 
uh, classic Dutch painter mm. around the 16th century. Wow. So he painted images of demons and hell like things, mm. you know, images of, you know, horrible stuff, uh, people getting tortured. So, you know, how you could imagine hell, he would draw that. And that inspired me. So I came up with the characters, the, the demons, I call them. So yeah, all, Afro demons. Well, well, that's Afro demons, one of them. You've got a soldier demon, you've got a builder demon. All these demons are sort of reflections of our uh, uh, humans. Now, you think demons, you think the word demon, you think, you know, negative, mm. dark, mm. hellish. Mm. So my characters, they're not demons that reflect the bad side of people. They just reflect what people do. So like, like I said, the builder, we get builders everywhere. Um, people don't realise like how valuable the builders are. Um, they, they put up the, the houses, they make the new apartments, they fix the streets. But I feel the builders get overlooked. Well, if it wasn't for the builders, we wouldn't have a city, would we? Well, pretty much, exactly, yeah. You know, and um, I used to be a builder myself. Um, same thing for the soldiers. Um, you know, we, 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 they, all these things are overlooked because we're not in it. We don't see it. We just, we, we go to our new flat. Mm. Our flat's there, it's been made. Soon, soon there's a problem. Who's going to fix it? So what I'm trying to say is it's all these public sector people that get overlooked. So I try and re recreate them in my form. The That's demons. really nice. So you're kind of giving them a bit of a shine, you know, it's uh, which is re really yeah. nice of you to do. You're giving them light. Yeah. So, so the, de the demon isn't uh, seen in a negative way, it's seen in a positive way. Yeah, that, that's, well, that's why I'm trying to ch ch sort of change that, you know what I mean? Um, so I, 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 I would like to write messages, you mm. know, have a good day, um, stay positive, uh, be inspired, or wow. are you inspired? Yeah. Things like that. Um, so yeah, so when I first started in the demons, they were very dark, you know, because I was sort of you know, on you know, sort of um, inspired by the Hieronymus Bosch era of you know the hellish things, and then once I I thought, nah, you know what? I don't really want to take this to the street like that. You know, I want I want people to look at my artwork and feel like feel happy or mm. feel feel some kind of you know positive emotion. Um, so I thought, you know what? Let's leave the dark side and let's go to the light. Um, and uh, my uncle always says, do artwork that reflects your environment. So like I said before, I used to be a builder. So I, you know, I was sketching my, my demon character. So before he used to be a builder, he used to be the hellish demon character. Then I thought, you know what? Let me put a helmet on him. Mm. Give him a give him a high 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 vis jacket. Then suddenly I've got this new demon builder now. So um, after like being around London, you know, being about in my mate's van or you know being on being on the bus. I see all these hoardings, these these spaces that look run down and rough, battered up with fly posters, battered up with rubbish tags. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna paint these spaces white and I'm gonna put the Builder Demon on these walls. So yeah, the first Builder Demon was 2009. Um, I did that in, I think June, yeah, June 2009, right on the street, opposite Borough Market. That's the first Demon wow. Builder, Builders I did. Did a series of them on the hoarding that lasted there for a good three four years yeah and um i guess that that part of london's quite busy oh it is yeah. so yeah back then it was just like that that kind of put me on the map i just i just started doing this street art or art on the walls if you want to call it um i just caught caught it at the right time as in just before social media swamped it mm. just before instagram swamped it i got it when it was just pure and organic you know, at the time where it was people were, you know, it was um, people were uploading their photos on Flickr. Do you remember Flickr? Oh, Flickr, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah the yeah, Flickr, Flickr days, innit? What about Flickr, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, the Flickr days, innit? Uh, there's always something people follow, innit? And how does, like, uh, Naif, how does it work in terms of your kind of, you could say, like, your brush strokes or your strokes? It's very kind of, you've got a lot of lines and. Um, it's kind of how does that kind of work you know what goes into doing one of your productions freedom mate that's what it is freedom um freedom. you know so from the days of doing painting fruit i didn't find freedom in that because i had to paint exactly what i saw now the style i adopted the fast quick sketchy style that's all from pen work and um i i, I wanted to um 
I, I used to look at um, old medieval paintings where they had cross hatching. Mm. Um, so you see a black and white painting, and how they'll how the artist would show the shade is they'll cross hatch, they'll mm. cross hatch the lines. For those who don't know cross hatching, cross hatching is if you draw an image and you want to show some um, tone. You use cross action where you do a lot of lines together and you cross them to, to form shade or form a tone. So I was into cross action then. So when I first started doing the demons, there were, a lot of them were cross hatched. I used mm. loads of lines, yeah. tons of lines. Yeah. So if you look back at the stuff I was doing 2009, 2010, it's, it looks slightly different to what I do now. Now it's a lot cleaner. I use less lines now. And a bit more I, what? A bit more technical? Um, no, I'm, I'm still free with it. I'm still free with it, but I use a lot less lines now because I feel I don't need to add so much lines to it. Um, I, I, um, it's not the fact that I'm getting older. I just want to do work now that is slightly more minimal, you know? I don't want to work too hard for it anymore. Um, I want to reap the rewards where I sell an art piece and that art piece took me like 20 minutes to do. That's the level I'm at now where I'm banging out work quick. You know, I'm not one of these artists. I'm, luckily, it's my style. It's a fast style. So, like, you know, when, when I'm when I'm doing artwork on the street or if it's for a customer or for the art shop, mm. everything's quick. It's fluid. I just bang it out. Um, but sometimes I've said to myself, wow, if you give me a challenge where someone said to me, Knife, there's a big wall here. I want you to spend a week on it. Spend a week on that wall. Man. The good? level I would make on that, you know, give me a week on the whole wall when the automatic guy spends a few hours on just one wall. Give me a week on that wall. The stuff I would make would be incredible. That'd but be I haven't amazing. had the opportunity yet. So I'm waiting for opportunity where I could get a big, big wall. Like I'm talking like a big, you know, 40 metre wall or something like that. Huge. That's what I want. I'm ready for it. I've been ready. <laughs> well, any, 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 anyone watching this, if you know of someone that wants a big, big, big production done, Get in touch with Nathan, yeah, because um, yeah, his, his work is absolutely on a unique. Uh, it's on another level. And you also you take up um, your name as well. You always put your name against your piece. Yeah. No, not always, but you, you do oh, sometimes. Put it, your, always, yeah, yeah. Oh, you I always mean, do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if I'm yeah, yeah you're not, mainly. You're not, you're not kind of like. You know, you know, you is that one of the ways you kind of like you market yourself by putting your. Obviously, your name against your piece. Yeah, yeah, man. No, people got to know who, who did it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> totally, um, no, totally. It's all well and good having the most amazing bit of artwork. Yeah. But if, if no yeah, one knows who's done it. Yeah, but yeah. some people want to remain uh, anonymous, which is yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, I, I respect yeah. that. But for me, um, I'm, I'm quite happy. And also, it's, it's, it's been brazen, isn't it? Um, brazen in this sort of game, being brazen is the key. Because... Um, People be oh he's written his name by Nathan Bowen. Oh man, yeah, yeah, that's legit, man. Yeah, he's supposed to, he's supposed to be there. He's got his name there. So when police see it, they're like, you know what? We don't even need to look for this guy. He's got his name there. Like, he's, it's not a big hunt for me. You know, if if, if, if police want to come see me, come see me in it. My name's are everywhere. It's not hard to find me. You know what I mean? Well, that is one of the I ain't hiding. That's one of the questions <laughs> I was going to put to you, Nate. It's like, uh, how could we say this? It's like. The work you're kind of putting up on the walls, you know, you should be proud of what you're doing because, as I said earlier, you know, London's become this incredible city with artists like yourself mm -hmm. putting up these productions. Uh, when, you, when you're going to find, go, say, go to find the spot, how does that actually work? Do you look around the city and think, right, I'm going to like, I'm going to do my piece on the side of this this wall? Yeah. So um, I try and find walls that uh, possibly are abandoned. Um, old businesses that are not there no more. Um, so it's not it's not too highly illegal. It's kind of like it's you're doing it in a respectful way. You're not like doing the side of someone's house. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's it's all the, it's it's part of the ethos and the ethos is um, afterlives. Um, afterlives is an art movement where you give uh, 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 walls an artistic reincarnation. So um, any wall that looks rough needs a bit of love. Wow. Give it a reincarnation. That's amazing. Yeah, so you know, I, I believe in reincarnation. And I Listen, believe... you, you should be, the council should be paying artists like you to be doing what you're doing and give you free paint and pens and everything else because, you know, you're brightening this place up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're taking this kind of dark, gloomy, sort of, you know, possibly run down part of London 
and you're putting your amazing, beautiful piece of artwork on the side of a wall and brightening the place up. You know, I'm sure like a little kid with their mum or walking past that wall, they yeah. look at the piece and think, oh, look at that, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's the whole, that's, that's for me, that's the success in it, you know, doing it and inspiring others, you know, I, that's, it's me giving. Um, I obviously, I did it for myself and I enjoy it. But yeah. also, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big believer of um, giving. Um, you has, know. It make, has it make you feel when someone is looking at your work, that puts a smile on their face? I mean, that must make you feel really proud. Yeah, yeah. Um, especially when, yeah, because when I do it, I don't know who sees it. I don't know whether it's still there or not. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's nice that people do, like, make the effort to reach out and they say, yo, man, I saw your piece. Um, uh, it, it, some people said, oh, um, I've left London now, but the days when I was in London, that always made me smile or always cheered me up. Thanks for what you do. Um, so when people let me know and they reach out, I'll be like, oh, you know what? That's giving me the drive to make some more. Mm. You know, people like people like the work. It's not for everyone, but the people that like it, um, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, and I'll, I'll always be doing it. I won't stop doing it. I'll, oh yeah, I won't stop doing it. And that's what I like about art. Um, there's no retirement age. You know, as long as your hands work, and you know you're you, you're able, you, there's no retirement age. Look at artists like David Hockney, uh, Quentin Blake, still going, isn't it? Yeah, still yeah. going. It's Quentin time. Blake, mate. You know art, what I mean? Art is timeless. It's time. And you know what? Another thing I I love about what you do as well. You do a lot of um. You do things like you know Spitfire planes. You do phone boxes. You do the London Eye. Yeah, you know, you do a lot of kind of tour London touristy sort of attractions as well. You put the Union Jack flag on the side of your piece. Mm -hmm. How does all that come into it? I mean, that's quite sort of patriotic as well. Yeah. So, um, all right. So, um, the whole idea is, um, was um, so back in 2012, um, I was on the, the BBC, uh, The Apprentice. No. Yeah, I was you on. Um, what? I was. I was myself. I wasn't. I wasn't wearing a suit. I wasn't trying to sell art. I was no. I was trying to sell my own art to the candidates. So how that come about was um, got a phone call and um, got a phone call from a, a TV production company, and they said, "Oh, we're we're doing an art documentary." They didn't tell me at the time what it was. They just said, "We're doing an art documentary. Would you be? Would you like to get involved?" I said, "Yeah, cool. All right." They sent me an email for a disclosure. They can't tell anyone. I was like, "What's what's this about? What, <laughs> what, what, what's all this about, man?" So they came and they said, oh, we're going to come around your house and interview you. So um, I had to make a body of work. I thought, oh, I'm going to be on an art documentary. Maybe let's, let's try and make some work that relates to London or relates to, you know, England. Mm. So mm. I started doing the Union Jack character. And uh, and the Union Jack character, it, it was um, originally the Queen's Guard. Right. Queen's Guard with the bearskin hat. And then I thought, oh, let, me put, make, let me make the bearskin hat into a Union Jack. So when this TV companies were coming by, um, they finally said to me, "Yeah, by the way, man, um, you're through to the, you're, you're you're through to the next stage. And by the way, it's, it's, the TV program's going to be at The Apprentice." So um, I was like, "Wow, I'm going to be on The Apprentice." Um, so like, yeah. Um, at the time, I was living at my mum's house, and um, I, I had to basically turn my living room into like a little gallery. So mm. we, 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 we moved the TV, we moved a few things and we put the artwork on the walls. And uh, yeah, the Apprentice team come down. So you had two wow. teams, a team called Team Sterling and another team I can't remember. Um, but yeah, they come down to my house and they, they were talking about my artwork. And the idea was to put the artwork in the gallery for, for the challenge. Um, they filmed a few other artists as well. But at the time, yeah, I had the Union Jacks, and I think having the Union Jack pieces sort of got me on the program because they thought, well, we could sell these. This is Union Jack. This is London. They were saying my work represents London, and uh, yeah, ever since that time, I've been on the Apprentice. I've decided to stick with the Union Jacks because after after being on the Apprentice, when it got aired, um, man, I, 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 I did well. A lot of people were buying a lot of art products from my website for being on the TV show. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna stick with these Union Jacks. And plus, I like the Union Jack flag. It's nice um, colours, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm, I'm not. Actually, yeah. there's a lot of. Do you know what? <clears throat> thinking about it, there's a lot of kind of style within a flag as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a great flag, but it's a shame that it's. Um, some people see it as negative, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. So like, um, 
I might, I might, I might at least say because it has, uh, there has been a lot of negativity, you know, that dates back a long time. But you know, we got to try and turn this around and move forward and keep things positive. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. Move to, forward, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We've got, got to keep moving forwards. Yeah. So there you have it, man. You got, um, you got a black guy with a Welsh name, Nathan Lloyd Bowen, that paints Union Jacks. So as a product of that, people don't even think I'm black. So when people meet me, they're like, oh, wow, bro, I never thought, you, I never knew you was black, man. I thought you was just some um, middle-aged white guy. So I like that as well. So um, yeah, um, I like that. People, yeah, people just assume that I'm just a white dude. Um, I find that really funny. In terms of like, say graffiti writers as well, um, is there kind of like a, a bit of stigma about what you do? Are they all kind of upcoming and forthcoming with you? <sighs> Um, well, there was um, there was a lot of um, it's a lot of, it's, it's been up and down really. Like I've, you know, I've, I've been teaming up with a lot of um, writers such as like Name Twenty Six. Um, yeah, big up Name. Yeah, I've, um, because I've, they're, they're, them them graffiti artists as well. They're, they're wicked as well. They got their own thing going on as well, isn't it? Yeah. So if you can combine the kind of two with what you do with your unique style and them doing what they're doing with their kind of own style as well. Yeah. yeah it's, all fucking, it's all positive, isn't it? Well, that's it. So, um, yeah, teaming up with Name26. Um, but don't get me wrong, I've, um, over the over the, over the the years, like, you know, if you always you always get someone that will come and, you know, t take you out. Um, so what I do is when I get, whenever I get taken out, I just go back and... Redo it. Redo it. Yeah, that's it. It's just that uh, mentality of, like, oh, you, you, you take me out, I'll just come back and touch it up. And it's it's maintenance. You have to maintain your walls. Mm -hmm. If you've got a, a, a wall that's been there for a long time, obviously, over the period of time, people are going to write on it. People are going to, posters going to get on it. It's not just graf uh, graffiti battle, or graf graffiti artists I have to battle with. It's the fly poster guys. They're, they're more ruthless. <laughs> they have no heart. That's they have know. no heart. Unless they go straight over you. Share whoever, who you are. And yeah. you know, they, they, for them, it's like, all right, I've got a job to do put up a poster and not get in trouble so with their attitude is like yeah they're just like you know they'll, they'll just take you out <laughs> and they're annoying like you know uh, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't laugh but let's like yeah, yeah they're, so, they're ruthless it happens man like they're um ruthless. I've, I've, I've 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 taken out a, a couple of fly posters before i've like, done a done a little character over one and um <laughs> i've had i've had one of them message me said oh hey man um What's going on, man? Uh, I thought we were cool. You know, what's what's why are you taking out my uh, posters? Mm. I was like, bro, you've been taking out my bloody um, art, art pieces. pieces, mate. Which like, have taken taken time to put up on the wall, and you come along with a bit of glue and a poster and take out my work. You know what I mean? So we came to an agreement. It's like, alright, bro, if you leave my stuff alone, I leave yours. <laughs> but he said that he's got he's got like, he's got he's got a crew of other guys that do it for him so he's sometimes let him, let him know. oh yeah sometimes it's not him sometimes it's them so i said look let them know as well man now, don't get me wrong i'm not one to make threats i'm not like that i'm not i don't play that tough guy role you know what i'm saying but mm. i let people know like look man don't do that please yeah, yeah, yeah. let's just work things out Listen, you know you've got to be respectful do you know what i mean we've got to be respectful london's a big place there's enough places where you can put up your posters without going over somebody's work it's that simple man isn't it, isn't it? simple yeah. mate also, uh, Nate, you know, how do you create um, a piece of your art? Do you use a combination of spray can, pens, paintbrushes? Yeah. Um, digital? So do you use digital? I I'm mean? versatile. So um, I use pens, paintbrushes, um, I'll use uh, spray paints. Right. Um, I make art out of resin. Um, so, like, you know, plastic, where you get uh, you, you resin, so you, 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 you make a mold. You make a mold, so I got my I got my character um, in a mold, wow. and um, you make you get the liquid resin, you mix it, and uh, you pour it into the mold, and it, you, you can make your own products that are three D. Um, yeah, so have I you got, have you got some of them in the studio? Yeah, we've got some in the studio. Show you some of that stuff. Go and check them out in a minute. Yeah, you can check them out. Um, I've uh, what else? Um, I like to make sculptures as well. Um, all kinds. I think like it's important to be versatile as an artist. You know what I mean? Um, you can't just have the. You can't be one track minded. No. Um, especially if you want to make a bit of dough, you have to ha have your eggs in different baskets, different ideas. So like, not just um, art. I'm doing. Um, I'm working on 21 minutes. I was going to say to you about 21 battles. minutes. Tell me about that. Yeah, so 21, 21 minutes. 21 minute battle. 
Yeah, so 21 minutes is uh, eight artists, seven seven battles, mm. and it's 21 minutes around one versus one. Who so, made who made this up? 21 uh, minutes. Me and my mate Simon, who was just chilling. And Why? Was, well, you just said 21 minutes. So uh, we, it came about where it was like. How long should, was, I said to him, mate, I want to do rap battles. Because <laughs> I, 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 I watch rap battles, yeah? yeah? I've been watching rap yeah, battles yeah. for years. And I was, every time I watched the rap battles, I was like, I want to make this into art battles. You know, we, we could have, we could do this in, in art, where That's we could play idea. music and artists battle out one to one. And don't get me wrong, it's been done where you, you've had the legendary um, Secret Walls. They've done their art battles. But I've, I've got mine where I do, do it my way, where we have two easels. Uh, we have um, big, 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 big paper that goes on a big board for the artist to lean on. Paper, the paper is about A1, A0 size. And um, yeah, they're 29 minutes on the clock. Then um, we have the crowd. The crowd picks the theme. So we say to the crowd, yo guys, what's the theme? What shall these guys paint? Some people pick planets. Some people say uh, whatever, whatever the theme is. And the artists have to paint to the theme. They can use whatever materials they want. They could even use their phone for references. And um, yeah, and then we decide the winner by the crowd. So the crowd uh, makes a chair, uh, makes a noise. And from that noise, we, we, oh, really? we work out. Yeah, so we say to the crowd, yo, if you think this guy to the left wins, make some noise. <laughs> and whoever's the loudest, but the problem with that is, it gets biased. It gets biased because some of the artists, they bring in their friends, they bring in their whole family. Oh, so the whole so family's cheering, yeah. yeah. So I think for the next 21 minutes, that's going to be in February, we're going to, um, we're going to, I think we're going to get some judges. I'm going to be a judge. Um, I think Simon's going to be a judge. And um, Harry Blackmore, mm. uh, he's going to be a judge. And the thing is, it'd be nice to bring up through a few other judges throughout the years doing this as well. Well, that's it. I would love to do that. It's, it's, but it, now I would love to do that. And you know what? I want to. Um, I, I believe that everyone's got a job and they should get paid. So um, with the twenty-one minutes, it's sponsored by um, a beer company called People's Captain. People's Captain. Yeah. So been, listen, big up to People's Captain yeah. for su supporting this event. Yeah. Big up I, to them. I do the artwork for People's Captain. Right. So um, so it's, it's, it's a nice craft beer. And um, on the cans, I've got my characters. Have you? Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah we work together where we do events. And um, they, they were quite happy to sponsor the 21 Minutes. Um, so, yeah, the artists, they win a cash prize. And um, it's artists from all sorts of backgrounds. You could be a graffiti writer. You could be a sculpture artist. You could be into ceramics, clay, Doesn't whatever matter. you do. As long as it's creative, exactly. you can join in. Exactly, yeah. Doesn't have to be on these. All some artists like to work on the floor. Some artists like to work on the table. Everyone's got their own way, but we have these battles on just to challenge people. People that are artists that are doing their artwork in their studios and they're used to their workflow. Mm. Now, nah, mate, this ain't the case now. It's the 21 minute challenge. You've got 21 <laughs> minutes. And you've 21 got 21 minutes and to you, comply and you've got to battle this guy yeah good luck get, and that's amazing uh, <laughs> that's amazing you're doing that knife and it's what it's doing is bringing the creators together yeah and it's giving people the opportunity to shine off their skills it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah. a wonderful thing you're doing in time before we hit your studio and have a little look around the studio bits and pieces of the art what does actually art mean to you i mean you know you you, you must absolutely love it it must take over your life um yeah art is for me art is like uh, art is like a uh, everyday drive art is um art is like it's not just a physical art is like a feeling you know what i mean mm. it ain't just about art it ain't just about you know expressing your mind and painting art is like your feeling art is the vibe you know um whether you're putting up stickers whether you're being creative whether you're inspiring others that's why i get out of art doing artwork that you know, inspires others and it's, it's, it's such a great feeling where uh, it's a pleasure to be doing your own thing. It doesn't cost much money and um, art is from the heart. 100%. So, um, Listen, 100% a hun a hun a art is definitely from the heart. Yeah. And it's so important because, you know, art can really unify people. Art, it doesn't, I mean, I'm not talking about just being an artist, being a creative. Whether it's making music, doing poetry, whatever it is. That is bringing you out. It, sometimes it could, can pull you out of like depression, yeah. sadness. You can get lost in this art form, and it's such a positive thing, especially for the younger generation, the kids at school, and all that as well. Leading them onto that path, that creative path. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think it's important that, um, yeah, straight, like, it's a straight, art to me is straight giving, you know? Mm. Um, like, I think, like, um, in years to come, you know, um, yeah, I, I, want, um, I want others to do art. Um, anybody that wants to do art, I'm always happy to support them. And um, it's, it's, it's the idea of, like, this is what I've got to give. And I'm, I'm happy to give to others op op opportunities that I didn't have. Because when I, when I first started out doing art, I, I, I'm grassroots. Uh, I had to get everything through myself. No one gave me a leg up. No one gave me a spoon. No one said, oh, here's, a, here's this gallery. Do what you can. Now I didn't do that because I put the work in. But when I started out, it was nothing. just me on my own. It was just you and a pen. Just me, me on my own, um, trying to work out, you know, in them days of 2009, like online portfolios and all of that. And then I just thought, you know what? I'm just gonna just do it, take it to the street. Took it to the street. And luckily my, luckily my style's original, wasn't it? That's the first thing you've got to do. You've got to be original. For your artwork to shine, you have to be original. 100%. You can't do remakes and expect to make it. If you want to make it as a graffiti writer, artist, street artist, you have to be one of one. And if you ain't one of one, your work ain't going to work, mate. So you have to either go back to the drawing board and figure things out. But original work sells. Like, like, like Nas said, there's nothing new under the sun. Mm. It's all been done. Mm. You know? Mm. So, yeah. Um, so to find, as I said earlier in this interview, to find that kind of originality out of all them billions of people around the world is quite a special thing. And there's only some out there doing their kind of unique style. You've got Mr. Sens as well, yeah. doing amazing work. I'm going to be cooking up with Mr. Sen soon and a uh, load, of, load of other writers and graffiti artists. But yeah, it's like for you to have captured the style you've captured, it's taken a lot of hard work, a lot of progression, and as you say, it come, literally it's come from the heart. Yeah. It's come from the heart. Listen, Thank you, you should be proud, proud of what you've achieved and for what you're doing, for pushing positivity back into the art world. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing, man. No, it's thank amazing, you. Dave. Cheers. Seriously, it really is. But listen, on that note, I'll tell you what, should we go and check out the gallery? Yeah, let's do it, yeah. Yeah, let's go and check out your, your work. Right, Dave, you're going to take us into yeah. the gallery now, aren't it? And we're going to have a little chat yeah. inside the gallery. Right. Well, actually, it's not really a gallery, is it? How, what would you describe uh, this? What would you describe this as, a, like a, um, a creative space? Yeah, it's um, it's a pop up shop uh, with um, the company who I'm uh, who I've got the space from. So the company I've got the space from is called yeah. Perks. Perks. So, um, yeah. P i r k x. Yeah. yeah. What benefit? What are the benefits? Tell me a quickly about Perks. So a basic outline of Perks is it's a health and well being company. Yeah. So you pay four pound fifty a month. And you Is basically, that all? yeah, well, wow. that's what you pay. You get uh, private healthcare. Um, so you still are like, you know, do you know when you wait to see a dentist uh, for NHS yeah. or you wait to see your GP and it takes maybe like a week or two or even months? Um, with perks, you could get a doctor seen to uh, within uh, the same day. Wow. So you're, you're, you're getting that, you're, that healthcare that's uh, immediate, you know? Mm, um, wow. So I need to sign up to them too, which I'm going to Me do. too, me too. And I know you can also, I think you get discounted gym membership and shopping discounts and uh, free online training courses for management uh, skills, all sorts of uh, well-being coach uh, yeah, platform. Yeah. So it's a real, for £4.50 a month, that's incredible. So tell me about, so basically Perks is run from here, and what, and the owner of this company yeah, so, said, come, no, if you can use some of our space yeah, so, to do um, your art. The owner, um, big shout out to Stella Smith. Um, Stella Smith is the owner, and she's a, a big fan of my artwork. So um, in, in the summertime, a few months ago, 2023, a few months back, um, I come here and all this space was just empty. Um, she said to me, uh, you know, do you have any ideas? What do you want to do? Mm. I said, oh, maybe we could make this into a pop-up art shop where I have some artwork on the walls. So. Um, I had the show. The show was uh, the rubber glove heist. Come right, come over here because this is the, isn't this the character? Yeah, got all the different characters. So this is the rubber glove heist character. Is that the rubber glove heist character? Yeah. So, so why like, do you call why do you call him the rubber glove? Well, because he's in, got the marigolds on there, isn't it? Yeah, it was in reference to the Van Gogh heist where the the the, uh, the criminals, the thieves, they stole the artwork uh, which belonged to Van Gogh. So I didn't. That inspired me to make my own heist. 
And it, um, instead of making it like a typical art show where you know Nathan Bowen solo pop up show, to get your originals in, I wanted to create a theme with it, and I wanted to uh, sort of like bring this character back to life. Because mm. I drawn this character maybe like seven, eight years ago on canvas, and um, the canvas was here, but the canvas is gone. Sold it. Um, so uh, I wanted to bring this character back to life. So uh, with this whole pop up show, um, I call it the Rubber Glove Heist. So uh, the art thieves have taken the artwork and instead of them doing the um, prison time, they've uh, been forced to create a pop-up show. And that was the idea of the Rubber Glove Heist. Wow. Just a random, get your, get your imagination thinking, you know? Yeah, get your yeah, imagination yeah, yeah, yeah. Back. It's, in, it's incredible. It's incredible you've got this little space here where you can, uh, yeah. you know, do, do, do all your art. Yeah, so with this space, we, we get a few office workers who work for Perks, they come and do their thing. And uh, I'm, I, I sit here as well. Um, uh, I'll do my drawings, um, might do some admin stuff. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm always creative when I'm here. Wow. So it's good that we could sort of collaborate spaces. It's a wicked, wicked little space. Yeah. Nice and warm as well, welcome in. Let's, I'll tell you what, let's have a little look downstairs as well. Take us around the, um, around this, around this creative spot. We've got a little, uh, what's his name up on the uh, little name canvas? Yeah, name, yeah. So uh, we had the uh, pop-up opening uh, October the 13th. Tell me about some of these bits on the wall. Uh, so yeah, some of these different artists. Uh, we've got a guy called Kyan. Um, yeah, Gary, Gary Kyan. Uh, we've got um, Harry, Harry Blackmore. Harry Blackmore. Um, we've got uh, Claw, Mauricio Claw, AKA Mickey Claw. Uh, Brazilian, he's gone back to Brazil now. He used to live here for years and years. Now he's gone back to Brazil. Tell me about this, this the ghetto blaster. You, um, yeah, you got, one of your character, you got one of your characters on it. Yeah, I um, I found that out. I got it from a boot fair a while back, and um, I just thought I'd just add a you know, bit of artwork to it. Because that's quite important what you do. Aren't you really into like recycling as well? Yeah, man. Um, you know, re uh, reincarnating um, old dead spaces. Uh, you know, so like, as I mentioned, like afterlives. Afterlives is finding, um, mm. given walls, objects, uh, a, a new life. Yeah. An artistic reincarnation. Wow! And um, yeah, so this boom, this little uh, boom box, boom box here, yeah. is, uh, and it's, it's your, uh, just living its afterlife now. Afro demon or demon on the front there? Well, it could have been in the bin, something back in someone's attic. Now, you got some trains. You got some trains here as well. Name twenty six. Big up name. Wow! Look at this. Yeah, it's so just it's just dripping. Dripping with art. Yeah. Look at it. Look at that. Tell me about this. So I think it's uh, Anne Boleyn. Made Is that it? like what seven seven years ago. Went for a phrase of like you know painting uh, old English um, hist hist historical uh, people. I guess. Um, I don't know who's that. I, I, no, that, 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 I think that's there, it's like a medieval pope or something. Medieval character. Look at this, yeah. you've got a b-boy, like a b-boy character. The Afro demon. Afro demon, yeah, and tell me about that, obviously that's, you, you obviously didn't do this, yeah, but so you painted or penned this in yeah, onto so that. Yeah, classic charity shop piece. Oh, charity shop, charity shop. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, go charity shop, dig yeah. out a few like, random um, pieces, and, pieces. and um, yeah, yeah. Add, add a bit of artwork on top. Look at that. Yeah, I've got so many of those at home. And you got records as well? Yeah, collaboration. So Bowen and Blackmore, collaboration with Harry Blackmore. Harry Blackmore did the background. Mm. Loves, loves doing his planets, Does, using the masking tape as well. So you do work with a few uh, artists. I know you work with Name as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, we we've got collabs. Uh, we've got a collab here, like me, Glo. Uh, we've got uh, Zonk on here, we've got Zonk, Glo. Big up to Zonk. Uh, yeah. Me and uh, Name as well. Um, so yeah, it's good to like you know work with other people. What's that? Is that a toaster? Tell yeah. me about tell me about the toaster. Yeah, so um, I like painting on random objects. Does it actually work? Yeah, I, wow. I haven't used it. though, it's fresh. This is this is a brand new toaster, and I painted it. And what's that inside? You got a yeah, make the demon toast. So is that a real piece? It's of a real brick? piece of toast that's been varnished. Made it like two years ago. And then um, so it hasn't gone, it hasn't gone all mouldy. So what you varnished it? And uh, varnished it. Then um, another it. artist, uh, big shout out to Palmer Crafts. She mm. makes resin, and uh, she put the resin on top. So you made it look like uh, you know butter and bread or cheese, yeah. cheese and toast. Sorry. 
Wow. And look at these as well, spray cans up there. Yeah, I call them the spray cannibals. Spray cannibals? Yeah, the sort of like, you know, spray cans that have a bit of personality to them, you know? <laughs> spray cannibals. And, and tell me about these, look. Yeah, I've got the official demon toy. What are um, they made of, like um This made of vinyl, this is made of vinyl, um, made in China. Uh, it's been painted with uh, the most quality paint. Paint so toxic it cannot be shipped. So yeah, we've got a bunch of these been made. Uh, these are available as well. You can get these from and there. And there's, there's your positive message on the front. Be yeah. inspired. Be inspired. Uh, have a good day. Just something that people could just walk past and see. And cheer, you know, cheer, the cheer, cheer the day up. Got a name uh, spray can now. Grab a cup of tea. A Let's have a great look. Uh, who's this? Who's this done by knife? This one. That's Glow. Wow. Yeah, Glow. Incredible. It's nice. Take us. Oh yeah, let me show you something, guys. Yeah. Oh wow. Look at that. How did you um, make this? You sent off your sent design. Off design. Yeah, yeah. I ain't making this. I no. made one similar years yeah. ago. Like this is all slightly broken though. This is what I used to make years ago. It used to resemble like a light bulb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> No, battery's dead. But yeah, so I went from making like, you know, getting, again, recycled objects from the pound shop, a coffee yeah. tin, getting some lead strips, making it like a yeah, large light bulb. Uh, this was like a, a plastic bowl I got from Poundland. Yeah, made these like literally 2016. Wow. So um, yeah, these are quite old. This is the first one I made. But again, these, I used to hang it up. But yeah, uh, right but up. again, yeah, I need to, yeah, I need to just fix it. These are just damaged art. I need to just uh, get back to life again. It's an incredible space, though. I mean, it's uh, it's a real kind of hub of creativity. One thing I'd like to say is there like um, any kind of like advice or like a positive message that you can send up and coming artists? Yeah, anyone that wants to get into art, don't do it. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, so yeah, the idea is to be original. Uh, you know, you stick to your craft, uh, do what you do, um, make sure you carry out your plan. Then when you carry out your plan, you have to learn to execute the plan. You know, art is conviction. Um, and you know you should always uh, see it through art with integrity and art comes from the heart so all, all, all the art I do I do it for myself and I do it for the people um, I like to give uh, it feels great and uh, so I, I see myself when I do my artwork on the street I'm giving um, people could take from that whether they want to be inspired whether they want to do art themselves or spread the love to others so yeah guys be original man be, um, original. Just be yourself and also as we said you know there's nothing more special than being kind of creating something whether it's a poem writing a book yeah creating a piece putting your name up whatever it is you know it's getting getting you out there doing positivity keeping you away from all the negative stuff yeah. whatever it is it's so important yeah. isn't it, for the younger generation yeah yeah exactly you find that you just got to find your outlet you know whether it's football or boxing mm. um you know uh I got I got an art I got an art piece on the street that says uh, put down a knife pick up a paintbrush. Have you really? Um, yeah, it's up in um, South East London, Bellingham. Um, a few years ago, a young child uh, got stabbed on that road. Wow. And mm. um, so, like, yeah, they had this massive empty billboard. So mm. I decided to do that message, and that message is still there now. It's been there for about for a good four four about four or five years, four years, four years, I say. Um, but yeah, man, the community love it. Uh, we all love it. Um, so yeah, like you know, it's an important message, man. It's yeah, it's a lot of yeah, it's a lot. Obviously, there's a lot of problems out here. Obviously, um, so yeah, and, and people uh, just got to find that outlet, innit? You and know? one 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 of the ways that we can survive and stay positive is through through creativity. That's one of the routes you can go down, isn't it? Yeah, man. I, I wake up every morning, and like, yeah, there's a lot of obstacles in my way. Mm. But like, how do you deal with that? Um, so I deal with that by obviously. I, don't avoid it. All the, all the obstacles that come at you, you can't avoid it because they'll they'll creep they'll creep back later. Mm. You got to deal with it. You got to take responsibility. Um, and I, and at the same time, I wake up every morning and um, I'm, I'm I enjoy that I'm blessed with life and I enjoy that I'm blessed with talent. I enjoy that I've got the skills. So yeah, I, um, I make 
fully advantage of that, you know what I mean? Where, you know, I wake up, I look forward to painting, I look forward to seeing my mates who paint as well, um, and, you know, inspiring others, you know, always in the back garden making new work, at home making new work, or out on the street making new work. There's always work to be done. Um, so, yeah, it's like, you know, life's a playground of opportunities, isn't it? Listen, how can uh, people find you? Know, find you. Have you got like Instagram accounts? Or? Yeah, you can drop me a message on Instagram. Um, under Nathan Bowen. Yeah, at Nathan Bowen Art. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. Still got that at Nathan Bowen Art. Uh, or you can just Google Nathan Bowen Art. Um, also got a Nathan Bowen Art Shop as well. There's original products uh, on there at affordable prices. Um, any commissions, any ideas you have, just holler me. Uh, do, you want, do you want to give a little shout out to anyone? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, I want to shout out, um, big shout out to Perks, um, big shout out to Stella Smith, big shout out to all my art buddies out there doing their thing, you know. Um, I don't need to mention particular names, you guys know who you are. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, man, big shout out to people that give. <laughs>